Here we go. Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Very excited to have this young lady on here. We are going to talk about superpowers, superpowers. Uh, <laughs> but I love the title of her show. Our connection to animals may be our greatest adventure, and I can't wait to take a deep dive into that. Kim Cameron, welcome to the Ted Show. How are you thank today? You. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a fantastic day, and I love being on your show. Well, thank you. You look amazing. We got this down. We're going to make this work and make an impact. You have a lot to talk about. Uh, and I want to take a deep dive into animals and I want to take a deep dive into the movie. I want to know all about you. But before we do that, I was telling you before we went live that the audience loves an origin story. They want to kind of know uh, how you came to be where you're at right now. So would you share some of that with us? Well, for sure. I mean, I grew up in Southern California, but I've bopped around the United States. So um, I've probably lived in about 10 different states at this point. And right now I'm in Florida. Um, Yay, so, me yeah. too. You're South Florida, right? Yeah, I'm South Florida down here on Miami Beach, which yes. today is a gorgeous day outside. Um, I but love Miami and I especially love Miami Beach. I'm in Orlando. Okay, not far, just not up the road. Um, and you know, I, I, because I grew up in very close to the beach, uh, in California, I have this passion for the ocean, anything water is kind of my thing. So I like to stay, I'm, I'm much happier if I'm closer to the water than not closer to the water. And that sort of gives me my inspiration for whether it's my music or my movies or whatever. So that's kind of my, my thing. I love um, it. I even had a an album that I called Naturally Yours and every single song was about elements of the of of the earth that we sometimes take for granted. So, so talk about that. Did you always have a passion for the earth and being in, you know, it's one thing to have a passion as a kid. It's another thing to allow that to be part of your life as an adult, part of your life's work, part of your passion as an adult. Uh, what was that like? How did you figure out how you could do all the things that you wanted to do and still stay close to the water, uh, embrace animals, which we'll talk about, uh, and still do your music? What, what was that like going from a kid maybe who loved that to an adult who made it your life's passion? I give a lot of the credit to my parents because they were always, I mean, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So what they ended up doing was we, you know, did the whole caravan across the country to see the various parts. But, you know, the one thing that was free was going to all of the national parks. And so that's what we did. And we hiked and we, you know, camped and I just became a lover of all the outdoors. And in fact, I hated being inside. It was like my absolute worst thing. <laughs> is to be inside. So I think that I give that credit to my parents because that's really where we, you know, where I felt most happy is when I was outside with nature. And uh, once you've got that passion for it, that doesn't, doesn't really go away. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> you start working inside and all you think about is when do I get to leave and when do I get to be outside? So I think that's always been with me. Well, yeah, like someone like you, I would imagine, yeah, being cooped up in an office building or an office cubicle or at a desk probably has its moments, but certainly not where you want to be. No, no, never want to be there. <laughs> so let's never. talk about, I told you the title. I've never had anybody have a title of a show quite like this. And I read it a few times. Our connection to animals may be our greatest adventure. I'm a big animal lover. I, I just, I have such a passion for animals. Um, I want the world to be better to animals, but I've never heard it phrased quite that way. So how in your mind is our connection to animals, our greatest adventure? Well, if you think about it this way, if we try to understand animals a bit better, then you naturally want to take care of them and take care of the environment that they are, you know, living in. Yes. So, and once you do that, you have this sort of, you know, I'm going to take care of you and, and, and they reciprocate. I mean, people don't really give animals enough credit, but there's enough, you know, YouTube videos out there that people have, have captured that they, they, they're a lot smarter than, and they're a lot more aware of their surroundings. And, you know, there's a lot of people who talk about 
you know, what we need to do to our protect our environment. But I think it, it's um, sometimes people make it more complicated than it really is. You know, it, and those are some of my messages that I say to kids when I go to the schools, which is it's the small things that really can make a very big difference. So if you see trash on the, on the ground, you pick it up, right? Because right. that goes someplace. And whether it's recyclable or wherever, getting it out of, you know, turtles who are on the beach or getting it away from dogs or cats. And sometimes they don't know. It smells good. They eat it. They get sick. You know, so you you really can get a different level of not only helping the environment, but helping the animals. And then then that connection forms naturally. Agreed. And I think that it's it's amazing to me, people who discount. Um, I can't watch, of course, any video that has Sarah McLaughlin singing in the background. I can't I can't watch any of that because it just breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, and so but I what I do love to watch is animals who I feel like we don't understand how absolutely intuitive uh, and much more emotionally and contact uh, connection based that they really are. They they feel, they uh, acknowledge, they understand in a way that we don't understand. But I can tell you that they understand from personal experience what we're going through, how we're feeling. Um, and it's just, it's a blessing. I think I did not grow up with animals, which is interesting. And so I was always leery, but my wife, not leery, but I just didn't know. Always loved them, but didn't know. And then my wife grew up with, with dogs. And so we started to have pets and I realized what I had been missing. Uh, Cause they're not pets. They become family. They, they become family. Yeah. You, I mean, um, I, I grew up with a couple of pets, um, but not an abundance they were mainly like strays that I wanted to take care of until they passed on. Um, but yeah, my definite, definitely my passion for animals kept growing as I matured. And, uh, you know, they're, they are animals, but they are part of the family. I mean, you, Absolutely. you take care of them, you feed them, you call them a name, you know, it's all of those. And you mourn. Uh, we lost seven months ago ish. We lost one of our, you know, amazing family members. And it was still to this day when we talk about it, it's seven months later, it's still heartbreaking. And so okay. I think that you, you make a connection um, like no other. And so I think that you find that, I, I believe that people, again, underestimate the power of animals in our lives and how much they can change them for the better and how much they do. Uh, feed us back some incredible unconditional love and support. Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore. And what they're doing in some of the VA hospitals with some of these animals and the um, lawyers who have PTSD, it's just, it's just incredible. And again, it's another way to look at, you know, if, if we do connect to animals, it really can be our, our best adventure that we could live. So, so good. I've taken that theme and that's really how I built the, the, my first feature film, which is now out. And it's yes, I can't wait. All right. So tell us all about this it's exciting stuff. Tell me, tell me. So it was released officially on as a Dove original project on um, December 10th. And uh, so just a couple months ago on the Dove channel and it's um, 88 minutes. So it's a little bit long for an animation film. It's geared towards like four to seven year olds. Um, so a younger audience. And it's based off of the, my first children's book. So it's called Superpowers in Search of Blue Jay's Treasure. And it stars a little girl who is about eight years old. And she discovers when she goes on vacation with her parents that when she dives into the Caribbean crystal blue waters and comes across the magic seagrass that all of a sudden she has the ability to talk to fish. So she befriends an octopus and a starfish, and they go on this adventure together. Uh, the adventure is searching out for Blue Jay's treasure. So it's a, it's a treasure hunt, and along the way, they you know they they meet some characters who are trying to eat them because they are in the ocean, and and that becomes a little bit of the the scary part. But I wanted some 
something out there that, again, reflected that theme of why you would take care of the animals. Yes. So you have that build throughout the movie. But I also wanted it to be an adventure and a fun film for kids. I don't feel like we have enough just fun films. We, we don't. Them. I know. Why is that? I, I love that you brought that up. That The programming, I feel like, is there's not enough fun at all. It's we're we're pumping out all of this content that's so serious. Yeah. And I just, you know, I had fun films that I got to see as a kid and I still think fondly of those. And I just feel like that was that's a little bit what's missing is that variety of of fun and adventure. And that's what this film was really um, taking on. So it's since uh, December, it's now on like all of the streaming channels in the North oh, America. Um, awesome. And China. What's that about- feel like? What does that feel like? So it's one thing to be an author. I think that's amazing. And uh, so many people have never been an author. That's one step. But then taking that idea, taking that whole concept and making a film and then seeing it out there everywhere. I mean, I'm excited for you. What what, what was that process like? Because you had to make a leap. It's writing a book and filmmaking completely different, even though they're creative, uh, completely different process. So how did that work out? Well, um, I I was the director and the producer of this film. So not only did I write the screenplay, but I did all the other jobs in between. Awesome. And it was, um, it, it was, I won't say that it was easy because it, it was super, super hard, yeah. but it was so rewarding once you had it done. Yeah. And you're taking a leap of faith, right? Do you, will this really be seen? I mean, will people really want to buy this film? And, and you you don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you really, really don't know. And so it's, you've got the, just putting the content together and the storyline together and make it interesting. And then you're selling to a bunch of people who are not your audience, right? So everybody who buys your film, they're not four to seven year olds. So, <laughs> you, you know, you, you try to figure out how do I position this to something, you know, to a, to, you know, a network exec who's 45, 50 years old and, it, it, it's um, it was a tremendous learning experience, um, but I, you know, once the word and the contracts were finally sold, I got to tell you, I was I was out having cocktails, having the time of my life because that was an <laughs> amazing night, right? Because you, we had three months of negotiations, and so every time you thought, oh, it's going to get no, every time <laughs> you know, you take a couple steps, no, it's not. But once you finally get there. Um, you know, it's not like when you're performing a show and once the show's over, you can celebrate and all those things. This is, takes a, a bit longer. It's a bigger product, obviously, than just doing a one-time show. But um, Well, as a creative, it's, it's your baby. And I always yeah. try to stress that. Like, this is, this is something that was in you and your soul and your heart, spirit. And so your birth, you birthed it through the book, but then you had a whole second birthing through a film and it is it is something that become that is part of you and so when you are releasing that when you're finally sharing that vision and um those thought processes and your you know what you're thinking about with other people making an impact it's a big deal it's a, it's big a deal. very big deal and it's such a big deal that i'm already in production for movie number two so Woo, all right tell us <laughs> is, it, is it a sequel is it a well, the the um, the superpowers uh, children's book is a series. So I've actually written five in the series. This is the second book in the series, and this one actually stars Vanilla Ice. So we're spicing it up a little bit. It was really nice. fun to work with him. Um, so this is you know, and again, now this my theme for this movie is um, it, it's called. Uh, the biggest, the smallest things can make the biggest difference. So, and just to give you guys uh, or your viewers a little bit of insight, it's a very small sea creature that ends up saving the world. I love it. Because you never know, right? Because you never know. I love the messages behind it. When you, when you put a, a creative out, when you, when you actually see the product is there like do you are you overwhelmed by emotion do you think oh my god um i finally made it and i'm gonna stop do you do you go gosh i have so much more to say what's what's your what's your process there 
Um, well, for the first movie, it took me about three and a half years to do. So by the time I was just like, thank goodness I'm done with this, right? <laughs> you were like, please get this baby out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, now the second one will not be that way. I think I'll get the second one done within a year, which is, it, believe it or not, that's really, really fast. Um, people don't do animation that fast because animation is a very, very detailed work. Um, when I told people that, you know, it took me three and a half years to do the first one, they were, they were, yeah, that's about how long it takes, right? So um, movies are a little bit different than when I write a song, I'm like super, oh, I'm done, I can't wait, because it's, it's such a short period of time for writing songs. Um, but when you're working on projects that are this big, uh, it's, you know, it's, it, <laughs> A lot of times you're just tired. <laughs> well, I would I would imagine because you know you're you're trying to make it. I, I'm sure as a creative, you want to make it so it's as perfect as possible. It's reflecting exactly what you how you want it to be, how you want it to look, the message, the wording. I mean, there's a lot that goes into, especially since you wrote it uh, and got involved in the production of it and did all of that. It's a big. It's a Herculean task. It's big. Yeah, but I love it. I mean, I love every part of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I, I, I feel very lucky that I get to do what I do. I mean, this is a, I live to me the dream life. I, I get to be creative and then get paid to be creative, which yeah. is just, you know, what can you, what more that's, can you ask? That's correct. All right. So Kim, tell them the best way that they can find out about the movie, the books, even your music, by the way, which I would love to have you guys come back on and, and perform you to come back on, but tell them the best way they can find out more. So you would go to Seeper Powers. So it's like super, but it's in the sea. So it's superpowers.com. Uh, and you can use that same that you can see some trailers and some movie clips on the YouTube channel, which is also the Seeper Powers. Or you can go on Etsy where you can see the books or, or purchase books and toys. Again, superpowers. Um, Instagram page is superpowers as well. So we're we're kind of easy to find if you figure out the spelling is S E A. I got it. I have it scrolling. I have yeah, superpowers.com scrolling across there. Kim, I love this. I really would love to have you back. I think we have a lot of conversations about music and animals and more filmmaking. I think it's your energy is awesome. And that positive message that you're putting out there is what we need. And it's fun. It's That's fun. the part, right? It's fun. Exactly. You can, fun. Exactly. You can, you can give a positive message and still uh, have fun. And I think we are. You're 100% right. We miss out on that, especially a lot with kids programming. Uh, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you. <laughs> wow. All right. Go to superpowers.com. Uh, I've tagged Kim. I'll tag everything. You guys reach out, get involved, uh, buy whatever it is that she's got going on because that's how we support our creatives and that's how they continue to impact the world. All right, Kim, thank you. We'll see you guys soon.